The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night. We've got part two of our exclusive interview with Billy Gunn. We're also going to take a look back at the week in WWE and TNA and a little discussion about this Saturday's pay-per-view from Ring of Honor and this Sunday's pay-per-view from TNA, a big weekend in professional wrestling. The Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night starts right here, right now on My24 Milwaukee. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime TV, the longest-running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime Saturday. Damian Nelson sitting alongside this one, RVD. Are you kidding me? Well, you did the thumb thing. That's just I'm just pointing at myself. I mean, that's what he did. I should be doing. All you this. do is steal gimmicks. No, I don't. Yeah, I you borrow. Do. I borrow. It's stealing once you leave. I don't leave. believe me. I'm not going to leave with this. <laughs> let's go to this week's uh, WWE report, ladies and gentlemen, and let's first take a look back at WWE Raw from this past Monday night. The big story coming out of it was the return of Paul Heyman, who came back and announced as Brock Lesnar's legal representative that Brock Lesnar quit WWE. Substantial, two, two very substantial things happening in that segment. It's very interesting. It seems like the WWE is trying to create buzz about Brock Lesnar. I mean, last week they had the story that leaked out of the locker room that Brock Lesnar had a meltdown conniption about the finish of their pay-per-view match. Now they bring out Paul Heyman, who has a tremendous history with Brock Lesnar, to read a prepared statement saying he has quit the company. It's almost like they're trying too hard to fool everybody as to what's really going on. It's not a bad thing. No, it's we not. We talked about how smart it is, actually, because WWE taking advantage of the fact that Brock Lesnar is a UFC or former UFC champion, so you wouldn't expect that he would get involved in storylines, if you will, in WWE. Because he's bring, making it real or legitimate again, isn't that what He's bringing saying? legitimacy back yes. to professional wrestling yes. and back to WWE. And the funny thing is, is that ever since he's been back, it's been nothing but shenanigans. But realistic shenanigans, believable shenanigans, Absolutely. if he's you will. Brock Lesnar, I mean, he is the guy that will pick up his ball and go home again, if he wants to. I'm sure that with this new contract that's written in there, there's probably a, uh, what do you call it, a deposit or something that he's had to make. <laughs> like Flair made on the NWA yes, championship? <laughs> absolutely. I mean, who knows, maybe there's a million dollars that if he no-shows, he has to pay that back. But, I mean, they're doing everything they can to give a sense of urgency to Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman, very surprising to see him back in WWE. It was... Brilliant, I think. A very smart move to bring him back. It was convenient. I mean, he was there doing voiceovers and interviews for the new CM Punk DVD. And, mm -hmm. hey, if Paul Heyman's in the locker room, why wouldn't you want to, you know, use him at one point somehow? What's the next step? What's the next phase in this very surprising move of Brock Lesnar announcing that he is, uh, via Paul Heyman, quitting WWE this past Monday night on Raw? Well, How do you get out of that? How do well, you bring that back? We know Triple H is going to be there next week to address the WWE universe, mm -hmm. and we know John Laurinaitis is not taking any more crap from anyone, but how do you get out of this? How well, do you climb out of that hole? It makes perfect sense, because right now you got John Cena having a match with Johnny Ace, right? So he's busy with that. CM Punk is busy with Daniel Bryan Danielson and Lord Tensai. So right now, even if Brock Lesnar was there, who would he be in a feud with? I mean, The Miz's value has been devalued so much, he's irrelevant on the show. Uh, because you single-handedly ruined his career. I didn't ruin his career. You did. He is now back on your team. Why don't you accept responsibility? Done. It takes a longer time to repair something than it does to break something. You just tape an aspirin to it. He'll be fine. Trust me, he's good. But right now, there's nobody on the Raw brand that Brock Lesnar could have a meaningful Oh, what about your with? beloved Lord Tensai or your beloved Ryback? Well, first of all, Ryback is on SmackDown. It's a super would. show. But he's on SmackDown. And Lord Tensai, he was busy with CM Punk. And they're both heels. He needs a baby face to work with. 
What about your beloved Alberto Del Rio? He's a he's a heel on the nah, SmackDown brand. You know what? I could listen. Sheamus. If they really wanted to do something different and get rid of Brodus Clay, have Brodus Clay do a program with Brock Lesnar. <laughs> That would not be... But right now, he's the only babyface that has size, with the exception of Big Show, that could go into a program with... Bra this is why Brock Lesnar is only working a few dates a, 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 you know, a month or a year, because they don't have a whole lot of guys for him to work with. Oh, and Brock, or, admittedly, doesn't like travel. Well, no, but, you know, and of course, Brock's going to handpick. He's going to want to work with Triple H. He's going to want to work with John Cena, Randy Orton, and, may and maybe CM Punk. Can you imagine CM Ooh. Punk and Brock Lesnar? That would get ugly real fast. I would like to see CM Punk's Muay Thai moves on Brock Lesnar. I would like to hear CM Punk lash out at Brock Lesnar, who would, I think Brock would kill him. You know what that would, would remind me of? What did that remind you, you, you of? You saw the Avengers, right? I saw the Avengers. I liken Punk to Loki. And he's smarting off to Hulk, which would be Brock Lesnar. And then Brock would just grab Punk and just all over the place, <laughs> throw him down and say, puny God, and walk off the set. Right? Couldn't you see that happening? I could, I could actually. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you don't know what we're talking about, please go see the Avengers. Um. Avengers assemble. You know, it's all part of the Super Friends initiative. Um, Brodus Clay. Yeah, never mind. We're not no, 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 no. Let's talk. Listen, Brodus Clay finally had a match that lasted over a minute. He's had a match. He's had. He had a, okay, a he's minute fine. and a half, even two minutes. He worked a, a match with the Miz, and you know what? Your boy, the Miz, got the better of Brodus Clay for about eighty-five percent of the match. He did. He really did. But at the end of the day, when all was said and done, the Miz you still said, had single-handedly ruined his career. But Brodus Clay was dancing. You just are you ever going to admit that there were never any weapons of mass destruction? No, because there's always a weapon of mass destruction. Mason Ryan is back. Yes. Now, Mason Ryan, who on the road has been working as Dolph Ziggler's you bodyguard. Road, you might, you're talking about house shows, untelevised events. Working as a... Uh, Otherwise, Dolph, it would confuse the people. Working as Dolph Ziggler's bodyguard, but uh, it looks like uh, Abraham Washington wants him as part of the all-world nation or whatever it is he's creating. Along with the primos. Is that what they're calling it? I believe, something like it's that. It's not the Primos, it's the Carlitos, isn't it? Primos, one of them. Yes. Carlitos, not. And Rosa Mendez, the quick, quick, slow girl. Ooh, well, just, why don't you explain what that means? It means she's quick, quick, slow. It's how she While dances. doing what? It's how she dances. Forward and back, back and forth. You know what? Abraham Washington has the chance to do a pretty, have an interesting stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he does get the Carlitos and he does bring in Mason Ryan, Clones. it's going to be a smaller, I mean, it's what they need. You, you know, like, you know, like, like how, managers, something like that. Yeah, well, they obviously, listen, they need a manager for those people because Mason Ryan, I don't know what his mic skills are like. You know, I don't. I don't know. He probably should never talk because he acts in a room. I don't know if the Carlitos have good mic skills or not. I mean, we know, we know Rosa can talk, but they need, they, they, they need this. I mean, think about it. When they had... Farouk and Mark Henry and D'Lo and Kamen Mustafa, they put in the nation. You okay? You know that? <laughs> that was my cuffling hitting guess, my I'm sure trophy. it was. I didn't realize I got a bell here. I can ring the bell when you go too long. Yes, ding. So, I mean, it's great for them because it gives them a purpose, it gives them a faction, it gives them something new, and imagine the four-pack sets they can sell. They can have the Carlitos, Rosa, and Mason Ryan at Target for 1995. How the hell do you end Monday Night Raw as it ended this past Monday night? What a flat, dull, uh, what did I just watch ending to no, Raw? No, no, not no. knocking Daniel Bryan, not knocking CM Punk, not knocking Lord Tensai. Listen, this is exactly what all the wrestling fans have wanted. CM Punk is the top guy, right? It's going to be the best match ever. Okay. It's going to be great. And Looking you know forward what? to it. You know, Three weeks of build. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. But, but CM Punk finally ends Raw without a mic in his hand. It's in a match. And it was flat. The fans are used to seeing Brock and Cena, Brock and Rock, Cena and Rock, all the other, th other big stuff going on. This time it was CM Punk left laying. And that's, listen, that crowd in, in North Carolina or wherever North they were. North Kakilaki. North Kakilaki. Greensboro. They didn't deserve anything Is that better. where the Crockett Cup was? It might have been. Greensboro. That, that crowd was flat. And yes, the show was flat, but there was no sense of urgency at any one point during the, that, that show. The, the highlight wrestling no, no, the, the best part of that show is a tag Cody with, with Sheamus, um, Randy Orton, ADR, 
and um, Alberto Del Rio? And Alber oh, I said ADR. Randy Orton, Chris Jericho? And Jericho, yes. And that, that would lead to a four-way main event being announced, a matchup for uh, Over the Limit coming up in a couple of weeks on pay-per-view between those four uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. We are going to take a time out, but before we do that, uh, as we finish up this week's WWE news, still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we're going to talk about uh, Ring of Honor's pay-per-view Border Wars coming up this Saturday night, and TNA, and the return that happened this past Thursday on Impact. But coming up next, it's part two of our interview with Billy Gunn. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime, Saturday night. The following is a PWR exclusive. You know, when we look back at your time in WWE coming in, and, and there was time before that, obviously, but of course, most viewers remember the smoking guns and then the transition into DX right after WrestleMania 14, and then several different personas after that. What was your favorite time where you felt at your best in world wrestling entertainment? I, I'd have to say the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. It, it just, I mean... I, I, I've, I've been lucky to have a bunch of great partners. It wasn't, you know, when they go, ah, oh, Billy, you're the greatest tag team person ever. No, it, it's not. I was, take a tag team, it takes two. And it's, so I've had a lot of good partners. Mm -hmm. But I think the thing about me and Road Dog was it was, there was something, I don't want to say magical or, you know, but there was just something from the time that we, I mean, we wrestled each other right. individually, singles all the time yep. and never felt as good or as close or as connected as when we did when we finally got together mm -hmm. it was just the weirdest thing and people ask me that all the time and i just can't explain it it was just something that probably you know most likely won't ever happen again but it was just something that clicked and we i brought out the best in him he brought out the best in me whether it was wrestling entertaining or just you know just going out and performing yeah. it was there was just something there and i can't put my finger on it you know and i had something special with everybody that i tagged with but that was just something i mean from the <laughs> from they go okay you guys are tagged now bam it was just like <laughs> kablam we got, got hit with something it was like woo, we're gonna make you you yeah. know tag you know worship people but it was it was good it was really good i can't complain and you know you talk about that era as a fan i remember we talk about uh when you guys joined dx back in 1998 after wrestlemania when Shawn michaels had gone away for several years it would end up being and then there was that infamous night in indianapolis indiana where you threw terry funk and i believe mick foley off the edge of the stage and the dumpster was that really the moment because there were some doubters at first yeah. was that really the moment where the credibility that the new age outlaws deserved finally was achieved i don't, I don't know if that's I, I think it was something that defined the new age outlaws because if you if people you know ask you or you hear it's always oh the new age outlaws a dumpster match oh i can remember it to this that, that kind of thing so i think that was definitely a defining moment was it for us I think it was. I think it was just everything is for us. I mean, that was just a, a piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, it was probably the the head and the yeah. <laughs> it was probably the big piece that you work around. But I mean, it was it was there. It was a big part of it because I think that's what most people remember, yeah. you know. So I mean, if they're remembering it, it must have been pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of remembering, you uh, would spend some time in TNA wrestling and uh, would be with the beautiful people and uh, was a, a bit of a, I guess, a fashionist. What was your ex school title? It was, uh, you were the consultant, weren't you? I was a good looking one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about, obviously, TNA now with Hogan there, Bischoff there, and just a lot of, a lot of things going on in that company. How was your time there in TNA wrestling? You know, it was it, it, it was kind of up in the air. I mean, it was fine. It was good. It was good for the time. But, yeah. you know, because Brian was there at right. the time and I came in and we tried to reform VKM, tried to do a little bit of magic, but it was just gone. Yeah. It, you know, we were we were almost like pulling teeth because yeah. it just wasn't coming. We No matter what we did, you know, mm -hmm. go to Titan Tower, do some yeah. funny stuff. It just wasn't there. People went, uh -huh, we get it. Yeah. It's not working though, yeah. you know. And so we were trying to we were trying to pull something that you can never duplicate. You just you know when you go back, you can go back and go, hey, New Age Outlaws, woo, 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 you know. But it's not going to be the same right. as when we were together, yeah. when we were it. Yeah. And and then you know after that, I think the best part and my most successful part there was with the beautiful people. Mm -hmm. You know, that was um, Velvet and Angel, and yeah. they and they wanted to do because they had something too. They right. were they were good. 
they just needed somebody to kind of help exactly. help yeah. them along a little bit and that was my role there i get it I, and i have no problem with that i love helping people yeah. you know i wish everybody that was in this business could do what i've done and be where i've been mm -hmm. So, and it just seemed to work. It was kind of fun, you know, it was just getting to hang out with them and go, working with them and we got to do all kinds of different things. Yeah. And it was just fun because then it got fun for me again. Yeah. It wasn't a struggle. It wasn't doing this. They were great to work with because they were fun. They would listen. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't going, ah, that's stupid. You know, they trusted me. They and and it, yes. And they trusted me, which is a big part of yeah. trust is a big part in, in a, any kind of relationship like that. Mm -hmm. And they trusted me. So they knew I wouldn't steer them wrong. And, and they just let me have the reins and kind of, you know, help them along to become better at what they do. And and it worked. And we had a blast. We really did. <laughs> it, was it was fun to watch. It really was. And I really, I think that uh, The Beautiful People was something that could have continued for a longer while in oh, TNA, yeah. um, which maybe is one of their challenges at times, is sticking with something and letting it stick. But at the same time, you got to wonder about today's wrestling fan. Thank you so much to uh, Billy Gunn for joining us here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Part two of that interview, you know, Billy looks great. All of you have identified that as well. And, and one of the comments that really has taken hold with me anyways from, from some of the feedback we've gotten on last week's part one of the interview is Billy Gunn just looks to be enjoying life and looks great. He's in a great place. He's in a happy place. He's no longer Mr. Ass. Now he considers Or himself, Rockabilly. Or, no, but now he's more Kip, more Monty, more Billy. And uh, that will be uh, continued next week with part three of that interview. The Billy Gunn Billy trilogy? Gunn. Yeah, it's, three uh, parts. Three parts, and uh, luckily we don't have to endure your three parts of uh, a comedy of errors, which is known as the Star of the Week. So let's find out, ladies what? and gentlemen, who stumbled upon what he considers to be fame this week in David Hero's Star of the Week. Well, this week's PWR Star of the Week is the one, the only, my good close personal friend Gino's favorite. She is tremendous. Pizza. Brooke Tessmacher. Brooke Tessmacher defeats Velvet Sky on Impact to earn her a number one contender's match against Gail Kim at TNA Sacrifice on Sunday night. Good things for Brooke Tessmacher. She's on a roll. The fans love her. She's dedicated. She's putting her work in. And look out, Gail Kim. This could be the match where Gail Kim slips up and drops the TNA Knockouts Championship. This week's PBR Star of the Week, Brooke Tessmacher. I do believe that's the first female star of the week. Are you going to add her to the Mighty Mouse Club oh, now? Well, first of all, Alicia Fox has been there. But no, no. As far as the Super Friends, there's only a spot for one more. And that is for the great Cali, Cal Hero. Follow him on Twitter, at Cal Hero. He's been training, hanging oh, and banging, whatever. hanging and clanging. Listen, he's been doing sessions with the one, the only, the TNA Knockouts Tag Prove Team it. Champion. Prove it. Eric Young. Prove it. Andy, roll the tape. What? It's a big day for you. It's a big moment in your life. Stand up straight. Put your hands up your side. Stand at attention. If you're going to be my new tag partner, we're going to go over a few rules. One, I'm in charge. Two, don't forget that I'm in charge. Three, it takes a lot to be in this. I don't really know what it takes, but I hear that all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do push-ups. Now, how many can you do? Two, three? Ten. Whoa. All right. Let's see how many you can do. You ready? I'm going to probably do more than you, but don't feel bad. I'm an elite athlete. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> what do you got? Two. <laughs> All right, good work. You did almost as many as I did. Congratulations. You're my new tag team partner. Now let's go do something important. Play video games. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. You know what? We just rewrote PWR Primetime. We did? Why? Well, oh. it's a big news story when Raw gets rewritten throughout the course of the day on Monday. Three or four times? From people who don't understand TV, who understands that you rewrite shows all the way through, even when you're doing it. Wait, wait. We even write this show out? That's what all these papers are for in front of me, and oh. folders, and cards, and trophies, and such. This is the run sheet you've been talking about? I thought it was just notes. See what I know. Let's go to this week's Ring of Honor report, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Ring of Honor's got a big pay-per-view coming up this Sunday from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, called Border Wars. And uh, for those of you that don't know the matchups or weren't tuned in to the Ring of Honor that uh, preceded us, uh, the main event will be for the World Championship. It will be the World Champion Davey Richards defending 
against Kevin Steen. Kevin Steen, who has recently pledged to reform Ring of Honor is, via video. Is this the match that everyone's been waiting for? They've I think been building up it, Kevin Steen for months, and now he's finally getting his title match. Uh, you know, there, 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 there's, some, there's some taint, if you will, on Davey Richards as of late. He's been Ring of Honor champion for a very long time, and some of the Ring of Honor fans are wondering if it is time for him to take a step back as they feel, or some of the feedback has been, that Ring of Honor is not quite where it used to be. But I would have to say this about Ring of Honor. Look at all the talent they've lost. Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero, obviously CM Punk, which was a while ago, but uh, Tyler Black as of most recent. Uh, so, so, you know, they're always rebuilding and building. And this pay-per-view Sunday features a lot of these people they are focused on rebuilding, including the television champion, Roderick Strong, defending against Fit Finley, the Belfast Bruiser. And that's the thing. They've also, yes, they have lost him, but now they've brought in Fit Finley. They are reused, they, you know, of course they have the world's greatest tag team, Benjamin Haas. Might be another tag team Lance coming in. Storm is, yeah. gonna, is there, and they bring He's back be the man Beast Rhino. Obviously, they're bringing in some more recognizable names and faces to help sell a pay-per-view. And Lance Storm will be uh, taking on the prodigy Mike Bennett, will be accompanied by Brutal Bob. And uh, don't forget this big tag team matchup. It is uh, Fight Without Honor. It is the Briscoes versus Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. That one's going to be a barn burner, if you will. A Pier 6, a Donnybrook, a slobber knocker from those two tag teams. That's a lot of gimmicks in that one match. Well, they'll probably use that and the kitchen sink. That's Ring of Honor Border Wars this Saturday night. Saturday night, internet pay-per-view. And for those of you that don't know, Ring of Honor's internet pay-per-view is now available at ROHWrestling.com. And there is all the information on their website right now, ROHWrestling.com, how you can tune in to that big pay-per-view from Toronto, Ontario, Canada this Saturday night. That's this week's Ring of Honor report. Now let's move on in and talk about TNA, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, which I think two big things coming out of Impact this past Thursday night. The return of Abyss, Abyss and the, 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 the big pictures that were displayed to the world. Rick Flair should have done that, wow. you know, not Kazarian. Of AJ Styles kissing the president of TNA Wrestling, the married woman. Dixie Carter. You know what's amazing about that is, you know, there's been rumors and shenanigans and lots more rumors about Dixie Carter and whoever else in TNA Wrestling, and now they're bringing Thanks, pal. Now they're bringing it to the forefront. AJ Styles, the all-American, the the father, the husband. Kids' names you know, on his side. And, and, and Dixie Carter. Wow. You know what I mean? Shocking. I <laughs> don't. I don't buy it. You know what I mean? Because. Even the storyline or no storyline, it's AJ Styles. You just don't believe that would happen with him. Uh, but boy, and, and the return of Abyss. People have moments of weakness, David Hero. Uh, super friends don't. We have a code of honor. Unless there's green, Dixie Carter's um, on your team. Unless there's green rocks laying around, we keep our strength and we're fine. But um, but let's talk about Abyss. Abyss show been missing. I guess his brother just had to look for him in the impact zone. Oh, well, his brother had to get beat up first, I guess for. Get Abyss back. Now, Hogan said there would be a surprise later on for the winner. Abyss was that surprise. Absolutely. And you know what? Good to see Abyss back. But here's the problem with TNA. They don't have any heels. Abyss comes back as a baby face. Bully Ray's a heel. Okay. Bobby Roode's a heel. Bobby Roode's a heel. <whistles> Robbie E's a heel. Rob Terry's a heel. You know, speaking of, of Rob Terry, he's a super friend. He's not on that. Man, man, he's, what, he's, is he, what are you He's Weapons are not permitted no, no, in the listen, building. And you know what's cool about Rob Terry is like he's my own personal Hulk, okay? He's not green. As part of the Super Friends Initiative, he told me he I remind him of Thor. So he gave me... <laughs> he did not. He gave me... Clearly. Oh, absolutely. Frame it up, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly, this is Thor. Yeah. He, he, so he, he gave me a parting gift because he was in town last Saturday. Him and Al Snow had a great match. I don't at, like you with this thing. Hell, I'm anti-violence. At, at Hal's Harley-Davidson. You know, and it was a lot of fun. A great time. Thor, Hulk, Al Snow is my Tony Stark. You can be Nick Fury if you want to wear one of those shirts. Why would I have to be Nick Fury? Because you have the patch. It fits. But once again, you're getting us off track. I mean, we've got to get back to TNA Impact Wrestling. You, don't, you, can't, you can't pick it up. You have to have the power to pick it up. That's what I was waiting for until you touched it. It was going to come to me. It will fall right to the desk. See? You can't hold it. So, but it's going to be... Too busy carrying you. Bobby Roode and RVD in a ladder match. Tomorrow night, TNA uh, Sacrifice. 
I think that's going to be a great match. I think it's going to be another defining moment for the career of Bobby Roode. Good things are going to come out of it. Bobby Roode should go over and beat Rob Van Dam and continue his rise in TNA wrestling as the most, as the longest reigning TNA champion of all time. That's what he has proclaimed that he will be, has Bobby Roode. And uh, you want to check out Be the Booker for TNA Sacrifice, which is available right now online, pwrshow.com, on our Wednesday edition of Primetime Television. That's this week's Saturday edition of Primetime Television. As David Harrell said, tomorrow night, Sacrifice on oh. paper. Sorry. I'll, I'll put this down. Tonight, uh, it, it's... Uh, Border Wars has happened. We're taping the show earlier in the day, so we don't have the results of that. You can go to pwrshow.com to find out all the results of that pay-per-view event. It works. And you no longer do. Ladies and gentlemen, for the child over here, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night. We'll see you again next week right here on My24 Milwaukee.